Greetings everybody, LVW coming with another derping episode of Derp Crack Family Edition. Today, I think it's time we finally put Charcoal-O-Matic 2.0 into its new home. And give it some updates, of course. I have mapped out an area where I'm going to be putting it, which will be next to the hut. Right by the blacksmith. Uh, what I have to do now is dig out a hole that's going to be approximately... 24 by 24 by 7 blocks down so uh, I will do that now um, I'm not gonna time lapse it or anything I'm just gonna dig it out and then I will return with the rest of this episode so we'll see you shortly all right everybody after uh, digging up my hole 24 by 24 by 7 which I would like to also point out that with this finished project the actual hole will be as big as this so you don't have to dig this out if you don't want to I'm choosing to do this for my own personal reasons um, most of this is going to be empty space that's all over here anyway all right so um, that what I need to do is I need to find where my various components will be so I'm surrounding the farm by uh, uh, essentially a road, if you will, or a path design. And this will allow me to see about where the start of my farm actually will be, which will be there. Okay. Good. Torch. Light that up a little bit. All right. So essentially what it is, is, is this will be the path area in which you know there's nothing here it's just the the charcoal machine will be in the center portion and above it we will grow a uh, uh, I use spruce uh, a giant spruce tree which you drop down and it'll feed the system and everything like that all right so I will finish outlining this and I'll be right back all right the floor is now all in place or the outer ring floor that is I've also Put, started putting in the inner ring and dropped down um, the three chests that are going to, three double chests that are going to be up here so I can mark out where uh, the drop stuff will be coming up to. All right, these are all regular chests, these, none, none of these are drop chests. The next thing I'm going to be working on is I'm going to start the inner ring and uh, I'm going to outline the uh, top portion of this inner ring. Um, this is the inner ring from this point on uh, the one off from the one the road is so I'm going to align this whole entire square with uh, spruce staircases and give me that for now I'm going to put a lantern there let's put uh, give me a couple more here okay and then I'm going to put a lantern where this lamp would be here and then another one here and that's going to be matched in all four corners of four sides and then I'm going to take the spruce logs itself oh, I got it there. Come on, you can do it and we're going to outline it just like this what that eventually will do is that'll help to leave the space down here where water will be flowing Alrighty, we shall be right back. Okay, the uh, beginning of the inner ring is now done on the top portion. I have lined it with the stairs and the glowstone. Uh, well, sea lantern, excuse me. I'm used to using the glowstone. Um, this will help to keep everything. Oh, hello. Goodbye keep everything lit with the uh, surrounding area good okay with the surrounding area uh, as well as the torches in the locations that I have them here it keeps anything from spawning and then of course I will have light sources on the inside so what we need to do is start getting the uh, lower portion of the inner ring down uh, I'm going to use Essentially, junk blocks, 
uh, to do this. Uh, I'm not technically a big fan of these two particular blocks. I use them uh, depending on what the design is, but I usually generally use these blocks for stuff like this where it's not really important what block is down. So what I'm going to be doing here is creating the floor level. I don't need that right now, so give me that one. Uh, and that's going to, that one will go there because I need this to go here. Alright, so now I have work place. Oops. Oh, I did forget one. Alright. Now it will be five blocks to the center section. So we have one, two, uh, three, four, and five. Okay, let's get that in place. Let's get this in place. Oops. A little bit of glitch there, sorry about that. Stop punching on me. It's because I'm looking up. <laughs> All right. Now, get this in place. Okay. That's three, four, and five. Now that's going to leave me an inner inner ring where the uh, hopper system and the tree will be placed, which will be right in this ring here. And I have to lay down in the glowstone and everything in here. So I will get the rest of the floor in place and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, the lower portion of the inner floor is all in place now. As we come down here, the uh, placement of the sea lanterns down here helps to add in the light sources around, specifically where the tree will grow. Uh, it's slightly overkill, but uh, I'm trying to guarantee I will have a non spawnable area as well as uh, tree growth. Next, we're going to put in the hopper chain. The, the uh, placement of the chests are, are really is what needs to be known here because uh, it is um, the area where we, we need to figure out where the hopper goes. I'll show you in a second. This chest right here is where the saplings will come up to. And this is the one we need to work off of. This is where uh, our food will be cooked and, and stuff like that. So this one is offset by one. So this corner here is the one that has to have the hopper that faces downward, just like that. The rest of the way you you decide to set up the rest of the hops that go in this square is entirely up to you. Uh, I just chain it myself, just like this. Simple, easy. All right, and then I'll just hopper chain into there. And now remember, this is the one that's going to face down. All right, so we'll be working with it underneath. Next, we have to put on four blocks of dirt here and attach to these. Well, actually, it's going to be attached to the hoppers, but. Oops. <laughs> Give me that back. And I will show you in a second why we're doing this. All right, give me this, give me that. Now, this is a, uh, as you can tell, mine cart with a hopper on it. You're gonna set that right on top of there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that block out and it's gonna fall down. We're gonna drop back that one in and we're gonna set up the next one. Now, we don't have to worry about taking out any of the other blocks here because we have this little bit of space where we can hit that dirt block and it'll fall into place just like that. Next pine cart. 
falls into place. And the last one falls into place, just like that. Now, what we have here is I'm going to push in dirt down into these four slots that'll cover this so the tree will grow. And as anything falls on top of the dirt, they'll go into the minecart hoppers, and the hoppers that are located under them will pull it out of there and into the hopper chain that'll bring you down into the system. All right, I will now push the dirt into place. underneath and uh, I'm going to start building the charcoal machine slash cooker. Uh, the uh, thing I'm going to be adding on to this are the item sorter so I can sort out the saplings and of course the logs that are going to be used to create charcoal and a um, delivery system for uh, cooking items from up top. The first thing I need to do is set up the hopper chain so I'm going to come over uh, there's going to be a total of four hoppers in this chain, so one, two, three, four. I'm going to want to come down two blocks. Come up. And then I'm going to drop one hopper and then one more hopper there. Come back. And then from here, I'm going to do the hopper chain. One, oh, you get close enough. One, two, and three. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to create my line for the uh, separation of the saplings from the logs and, I, and the rest of it is pretty well standard it's a uh, sorting system with the 2.0 uh, charcoal machine underneath it all right
right, everybody, everything is now in place as far as the tropper system and the elevators that shoot up the items. The only thing left now to do is to set up the clock system on the three components where the saplings will go up, where the food will go up, and of course, where the charcoal will go up. Now, I'm going to add on overflow protection on all three of these devices even though technically I shouldn't have to because the way the system cooks it, it will cook an item drop it in and the old system that I had is enough that it won't jam the system but if you ended up getting like a glitch or something and more than one item goes in it will jam the system up so what I'm going to do is I'll show you one of the placements and then uh, so we're going to have uh, a 2 by 4 section here and oops, another, oops, too much, <laughs> give me that back, let's put that in there, there's going to be another 2 by 4 section here, and then the last 2 by 4 section is going to go, uh, yeah, uh, da -da -da -da. that's going to go the wrong way. I want that section to go here. Now all you have to do is on this 2x4 uh, section is just mirror each one so that uh, the system will work. All you're going to do is give me that and give me that, get rid of those and give me that. Alright, we're going to uh, detect like we normally do coming out of the system. I'll show you on this one actually. Alright, so from here, we're going to detect that there's something in the system. Oops, wrong block. We're going to place two blocks here. Let me fix that hole. Two blocks here. On the other side of this block, we're going to put a redstone torch. Can we get the hoppers? Temporary block. We're going to make a hopper oops uh, I will fix that in a second hopper into a hopper system for a dual hopper chain we're going to send it something back and forth right, we're going to stick in a single piece of dirt or cobblestone or whatever it is you want now this redstone torch will keep this from going into this hopper from there we're going to take another comparator I'm going to drop right there into this block. And then from here, we're going to put a redstone torch there. Good. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to hopper chain these torches up. We're going to do two on each side. We're going to put one here and one here, which are going to depower because this torch is powered at this time. And you heard that little click. That means that this torch got this dropper to fire. And then we're going to take another block, put it on top of that torch. I'm going to drop a torch here, which will be activated. All right. Let me, uh, you know what? Let me use the dirt so I don't accidentally break this. Come up. I'm going to drop another block down on top of this torch. And once again, oops. If I don't fall, torch here, torch here, which will deactivate and cause that hopper to function. And it is storming out. We're going to continue doing this all the way up to the top. So, and then the last two will go here. All right. Uh, we get down. So what's going to happen is something's going to enter this hopper chain. All right. Well, well let me add, we'll add that in. That's going to feed down into this uh, dropper, and it's going to shoot all the way up to that chest up there. See. Now what I will do is hopefully we can watch this. Uh, you know what? Let's do it from the actual hopper chain itself, so you can see it work in action. Now you see what's going on here is that it's detecting there is something in this uh, dropper. 
which turns off this torch, which then allows this piece of dirt to go back and forth between these two hoppers. And since it goes back and forth, it pulses this uh, comparator, sorry about the phone guys, comparator, which powers this block, which powers and depowers that redstone tower, sending the item all the way up and into the chest. That is how the food will return back from being cooked, as well as the saplings that are dropped and sorted go up to the chain of the hoppers. Alright guys, so I will finish this up and then uh, we'll see you in action. Be right back. And we are now finished with the underside. As you can see, most of what I have under here is all going to be empty space. So once again, as I said earlier, you don't technically have to dig out this huge hole like I did. And once again, this was a personal choice that I did. Now, another thing I would like to note that most of these furnaces you're going to see are not needed. They're not necessary. The only two that are part of the whole system is this one and this one, which are part of the cooking system. All the furnaces are set up here to help with uh, what they call lag busting. So if it was to be placed on a, a, a server or something like that. Uh, it, it, you know, some people say it doesn't help, some people say it does. Irrelevant, I'm adding it in there to just uh, show that um, you can place this on a server and hopefully it won't really create a lot of lag with all the hoppers and everything in here. And with any luck, if there's uh, anything you may have missed with me walking around, you can pause the video if you need to and see what needs to be done. Alright, remember, this is the sapling chain. This is the food chain. And, of course, the charcoal chain is from there, from where the tree is. So let's go up and add the water, add some food, and chop a tree down and show you how this whole thing works now. Here we are back on top. As you can tell, I already got a tree planted. Now, to place the water, what you really need to do is, uh, from one section to the next, you're going to go place one here. Yeah, I'm going to get pushed a little bit. Place one here. Okay, do that. And then what we're going to do is basically just go down one whole side. Oh, not do that, though. Get in there. Okay. Oh, wait, gotta fix those gaps. Uh, I got gaps. Okay, okay good. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. By the way, depth threader helps a lot here, guys. Okay. Good. Good. Oh. Huh? Keep in place. And last little bit goes there. Now, what you're going to want to do after this point is you're only going to drop one here and one here. Same thing on the other side. Here. And here. Now that will generate a spot here and here on all four sides. See, here and here. That are uh, still water. And that's kind of what this ledge thing here is that I created is designed to do is that anything that drops will fall into this water. As you can see, I'm being pushed. And I'm being pushed towards the center. So this whole entire hopper box chain here is all designed to collect everything that's, that's pretty much thrown in here. All right, so let's take this tree down. Okay, let's go up. Uh, I'm going to staircase the tree. Not my, I should have showed you that. I already had some spruce that, that's in my inventory. Oops. Okay. Let's drop the tree down without chopping out my stairs. Now, the reason I like to use spruce a lot is, A, I'm generally guaranteed to get a stack of logs out of each tree I chop down. Same thing with the jungle, but jungles have a tendency of having those little offshoot limbs that can be a pain in the butt sometimes. 
So, uh, and, and for me, I find that spruce saplings drop the most out of most of the, uh, out of all the trees except for oak, of course. Uh, but then oak is the most generalized tree that we use in Minecraft anyway. So I use oak, uh, I mean, spruce a lot in a lot of my recipes and whatnot. Plus, I like the color. The leaves are nice too. Uh, they they remain green even in the mesa, uh, mesa and desert. So a lot of my uh, leaf designs will include uh, spruce leaves for decoration around here, like I did there. Now, if the log is stuck up in a tree, it'll fall down and, and it'll come down here. Now you saw that sapling fall there. I'm going to take this stack and we're just going to drop it, and it's going to go through the system. Okay, I'm going to let that decay naturally on its own. Uh, I'm going to need some chicken here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stack of chicken and I'm going to throw it into the cooker. And it's going to go down into the cooker. As you can tell, I have nothing here. I had nothing in here for saplings. And the sapling system has to fill up yet. Let's give me a shot up yet. Let's go down and take a look. Come down here. Okay, we have the food is cooking. The spruce logs are, are also cooking. And I don't think any saplings have actually dropped yet. Oh, wrong one. I got 41 in the count. And they're not firing. Oh, that would be my bad. What of it did I do wrong here, guys? Let's fix this right now. See? It's derp, derp craft for a reason. Uh, okay. Let's come up here. Uh, it comes over here. That's got to go here. And I know what I did. I didn't put a piece of dirt in here. Which will cause that to fire. Which causes that to go up. Now, uh, I should also point out that uh, over here in this system okay, you gotta come over here 64, 64 yep yeah. that, uh, you know, the charcoal will fill up the hoppers before it fills up that top uh, double chest and, oh, well, see, yeah, we had one fall off there that's okay, it might happen Majority of the saplings will come up here, as you can tell, and then of course you can replant. This chest will fill up. Alrighty, and over here will be our cooked chicken. Look at that. So all we have to do now is chop a tea down, throw some food in here, or whatever we want to cook. I can throw iron in and cook it. Same thing, whatever. And then if I need saplings, since if I don't have it in my inventory, just come over here, grab it, and replant. All said and done. Uh, okay, and that was one other thing I wanted to point out. Because of the trap door system, it is possible for a sapling or even a log to fall on the edge of the trap door itself and get stuck like that. That is an option and uh, possibility, as well as them falling on that little shelf part section there. All right. So, but if they fall on top of the wood there, as you can tell, they get sucked into the system. And that's it, everybody. That is the new location for our Chucklematic 2.1. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Always remember keep playing, keep building, and we'll be with you. Y'all take care now. Bye.